Welcome back to Dominique Pernay's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto. I'm an amateur astronomer and a mathematician, and I'll be presenting Dominique's course to you. Today is our last episode in the series. I uh, hope you've been enjoying it. And we're going to end with showing you how to do a precise latitude calculation using Polaris. As always, uh, as highly recommended because there is so much more information, so many more exercises, so many more examples, uh, and just it's just a pleasure to read uh, Dominique's book on celestial navigation. Highly, highly recommend you get a copy and his celestial navigation exercise book. You can find out how to order them at renavigationbooks.com, along with downloading a copy of the of a PDF file of the exercise manual, which you will definitely need to do any of the uh, exercises in the course. Um, you can also get some free worksheets to download. You can get some. Uh, uh, you can get a copy of this slide deck, uh, so you could review uh, everything that we've done in the entire course. So let's get into the precise latitude from Polaris. So as we talked about previously, Polaris orbits the Earth's axis in a circle of about 39 minutes radius, basically half a degree. And that changes from year to year. Um, it's going to get closer to the pole, so this number will go down a little bit. Um, as we get closer to the year 2100, not even sure YouTube will be around in 2100, but if you are, um, this will be smaller. And then it'll start going away from um, the Earth's axis and come back to 39 degrees. I'm not sure when in the 2100s that'll happen. but So just know that this number is not constant, but this is a pretty good estimate for the year 2023 as we're recording this. Now, the angle of Polaris will depend on the relative position of the boat, where the Earth's axis is that day, in the position of Polaris along that small circle. The position of Polaris along its orbit, it will be defined by the local hour angle of Aries, which we've been talking about for the last few episodes. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find the exact GHA of Aries. We've been doing that for a while. You know how to do that by now, you go into the almanac table for the hour before the site, and you interpolate for the minutes and seconds of the site using the increments and corrections table in the Aries column. You all know that by now. Calculate the LHA of Aries. Now, what's unique about this particular um, calculation is you don't have to do any rounding. So you want to calculate the exact LHA of Aries, uh, which is the GHA of Aries. Now, you may have to add 360, possibly, and subtract your boat DR longitude if you are west or add your boat DR longitude if you are east. Again, no need to adjust the boat DR longitude to get a whole number of areas. You want the exact full LHA. Then you're going to go into the Polaris tables in the Nautical Almanac, and there's a copy of what they look like, an example at least, uh, in the appendix of the exercise manual. Uh, to find the small corrections called A0, A1, and A2. I'll show you what those look like in a second. And again, these change from year to year, so you actually have to use the table that's in the nautical almanac for the year that you're taking your site. Uh, the exercise manual is just an example from a, some one particular year, probably 2013, I don't remember exactly, or 2003. Once you get those three numbers, you're going to do a simple calculation. You're going to take the HO that you calculated for your site of Polaris, so above the horizon. You're going to add A0, A1, and A2 together and subtract out one degree. The other thing that you're going to be able to get, and that'll give you your boat latitude very precisely. Uh, you can also read the bearing of Polaris, which will always be very close to either zero or 360 degrees at the bottom of the Polaris table in the almanac. Uh, for the latitude of the boat that you calculated. And I'll show you, you know, what you can use that for. So let's take an example. October 29th, 2003, 2214.32 minutes, 32 sec 14 minutes, 32 seconds UTC. And your boat DR longitude is 65 degrees, 45 minutes west. 
and your HO that you uh, decided Polaris was 32 degrees, 17.5 minutes. And we're going to call that your approximate latitude. Close enough for, for doing this calculation. And again, this can only be done in the northern hemisphere. Sorry, guys, in the southern hemisphere, you're going to have to use the sun. Do, do a noon sight of the sun. What is the exact latitude of the boat using this calculation? So if you looked up in the almanac, or at least in the example almanac in the exercise book for October 29, 2003, at 221432 UTC, at 2200 hours, you'll see GHA of Aries was 7 degrees 49.0 minutes. You go into the increments and correction table for 14 minutes, 32 seconds. And you'll pull out 3 degrees, 38.6 minutes. You add those together, and you see that at that moment, GHA of Aries is 11 degrees, 27.6 minutes. Now we'll calculate our LHA using our uh, boat's DR longitude west. And we see we will have to add 360 degrees to our GHA of Aries so that we can subtract out the 65 degrees. So after we do that, subtract out our DR longitude, again, because we're west, if we were east, we'd have to add, we get an LHA of Aries of 305 degrees, 42.6 minutes. And here's that uh, Polaris uh, table in the back of the nautical almanac. You can see, yes, this was for 2003. And we've recorded our, our couple of pieces of information. We calculate our, we uh, record our LHA. We record our approximate latitude, uh, which is basically just our HO. And we go into the table. So first thing you need to do is find the column with the range of your LHA. So we're 305 degrees, 42.6 minutes. So that's this column. Now you wanna stay in this column. The next thing you're going to want to do is look in the LHA of Aries column to look for where your LHA falls between. Okay, so our LHA is between 305 and 306 degrees. Now we're closer to 306 degrees, right? we're at 42.6 minutes. So we're going to interpolate one degree two minutes to one degree 1.2 minutes. Now we're closer to the six. So let's say that's like one degree, 1.4 minutes. So we interpolate for the A0. That's called the A0. See, it says A0. Then the next thing you do is you um, look for your latitude. Again, there's no interpolation here. Just look for the latitude that's closest to where you are. So we're at 32 degrees. So our closest latitude in this table is 30 degrees. We go over to our column. Again, you just want to stay in this column. And we get a number for A1, see the A1, that's 0.4, so you record that. And then finally down at the bottom, you want to record the month. And again, no no interpolation, no, you know, well, we're almost at the end of October, so I should be looking, don't do any of that. I'm in October, use the number in the row for October. Again, you're staying in that same column, and that says that A2, see it says A2 there, is 0 0.9, and you record that. And now you do your calculation. You start with your approximate latitude, which is just your HO. You uh, add the A0, A1, and A2 to it. And then you subtract out one degree. And you'll get your precise latitude of 32 degrees, 20.2 minutes. Bearing ZN of Polaris. As we said, Polaris will be very close to zero degrees or 360 degrees azimuth. Um, you stay in that exact same column you were in with that table, and you go down to the azimuth section. And again, just find the latitude that's closest to you. There's no interpolation. So we were at 32 degrees, which is in this table closer to 40. We go over and we see that our azimuth is actually 0 0.9 minutes. That's zero degrees, 0 0.9 minutes. Now, what is this used for? Most people just ignore that, okay? But if for some reason you are particular about drawing your line of position exactly, normally most people would just draw it 90 degrees uh, from the bearing of Polaris, which is zero, okay, or 360. And that's basically a, a, a parallel of latitude. 
For most people, that's good enough. However, you can, and I, and I stress this is probably beyond necessary, but there's some people who want to do this. You could actually angle that parallel of latitude a little bit so that it actually points, uh, the bearing is zero degrees, 0 0.9 minutes. So it will be slightly tilted line of parallel latitude, and that would be your line of position. But to tell you the truth, I would ignore that and just say, my latitude is my latitude, and I'm not going to worry about that. But for some people, it's that's important to them. All right, well, we are finished with the course. And Oh, I'm sorry, got one last exercise for you to do. Um, you're going to uh, take this information down here, fill in the worksheet, uh, get to the bottom where you add and subtract all your uh, your numbers. You get your um, uh, observed uh, LHA. And from that, with all this information, you can find your latitude by Polaris, which would just be your um, observed altitude, HO, plus the correction. Sometimes it's a minus. Usually it's a plus plus the correction, and that will give you your latitude by Polaris. And if you really want to, you can record the ZN uh, of Polaris from your location. This actually becomes more important as the ZN of Polaris as you get much, much higher in um, latitude. You're in, you know, the 80s, 80 degree latitudes th th where it this might make a difference. You know, your parallel latitude may not be exactly a zero degrees or anywhere close to it, but I'm not going to worry about that. I don't think most of you are going to be sailing in the Arctic. Um, so well, it's been a pleasure um, presenting Dominique's course to you. And again, as I said at the beginning, um, I can't recommend hi more highly this particular book to learn celestial navigation from. Uh, it takes you through everything we did in this course and more uh, in much more depth and also uh, takes it through you very you know, step by step, um, you can't go wrong learning celestial navigation from this book. Well, this has been John Pinto, and again, uh, been enjoying presenting Dominique's course to you, and I hope you have uh, happy sailing and fair winds.